Uh, so you were at Tiong Bahru for six years, is that right? Yeah. And then uh, you went to TTC? Uh, yes, while I'm there, I'm, uh, I'm also in TTC. Okay. Yeah. 1962, 63, 64. I'm in Teachers Training College. Mm, meaning you graduated uh, like uh, yeah. a few and years. Also, yeah. Okay. 60, uh, 64. But then uh, I had failed uh, one subject and so I could not graduate with the whole uh, group. I had to spend another six months in Teachers Training College. So I graduated the following June. Mm. Yeah. Can you kind of tell us uh, what were the things that, you know, TTC sort of prepared you better as a teacher? Um, I think, yeah, content-wise content, content wise is one. Uh, <clears throat> because many of the subjects, uh, how to teach a, a particular content was important, whether it is maths or English or art, art even, or PE. So there were different lecturers doing different things, and we learned from them uh, the critical the critical points that we have to try and use when we are in school in facing the class. Uh, but uh, I, I, I always remember this. My first year in teaching, I never had any of these uh, lectures to tell me how to teach. So I had, I had one year of experience and then I come in and then I, I learn some, some new things, I guess. Mm -hmm. At TTC, uh, were there like a course on pedagogy, like how to teach and how to engage students? Yeah, yes, yes. But um, I, I I can't remember anything <laughs> now. <laughs> Basically, I, you I'm make your sure. own pedagogy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but one thing I remember is this. You know, uh, two of my lecturers were my primary school teachers. Mm. Um. So these these two uh, teachers they taught me when I was in uh, I, I primary three and standard one or something like that, and then later on I see them in teachers training college. Uh, that was one one uh, one one part. Um, <clears throat> Were yeah. they surprised to see you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were shocked to see me. <laughs> To, to to think that hey how can this fellow come and be a teacher? <laughs> mm. So you were uh, after TTC, you were never going to continue in a primary school, right? You you how how did you get posted to Dunan? <clears throat> okay, so this posting was also quite unique because uh, in the years in, in from nineteen sixty one when I became a teacher. Uh, 1961, 62, and even 63, I was playing football for the Singapore Teachers Union football team. And uh, <clears throat> and and the, the 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 captain and also the manager of the team was a was a teacher by the name of Sadul Singh. And Sadul Singh was also he was teaching in this Danian Secondary Technical School. He was the head of the department mm. for sports in Danian Secondary Technical School. And, and so, uh, uh, I, I, that, that's how he, I don't know why, he, he said, come, you come and teach in my school. And that's how I, I became, I went to Danian I went to Dunnan Secondary Technical School. I was pulled over from Tiongbaru Primary School. Mm. Uh, but by then, I also had become a, 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 a national sprinter. So uh, I came into sports in 1964, uh, and then in uh, 1964, uh, 65, 66, I was in Tiongbaru School, and then in 1967, I went to Danian Secondary Technical School. Before you so, went there, did, did you have any 
did you heard anything about Dunan's uh, technical school? No, <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> because you know, I, I am. I grew up in Pasir Panjang. My school was in Tiong Bahru, which is also in that uh, Alexandra area. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm you know, I'm in teacher training, but nothing to do with uh, Bukit Timah and so on. And so when I was asked to go, when I was invited to go to Danian Technical, uh, it was quite, I, I don't know, I think uh, it was quite traumatic maybe for me <laughs> because um, <clears throat> I remember this. Um, at first, I had to take buses to there and then in a very short while, within weeks, I think, uh, one, of the, one of the teachers in that school um, he had a brother who was attending Queens, Queenstown Technical School. And so this uh, this te teacher who was in Dunham Technical, he said, hey, I, I always dropped my brother in Queenstown Technical School and you are living in... Uh, by, by then we had moved to Henderson Crescent. And so... He said, you can come and meet me at Queenstown Technical School. And from there, I can fetch you to Dunian Technical School. And so that's what I did. So I would get up early, get everything ready, and then walk from my, my home in Henderson Crescent, walk down uh, maybe about, uh, I don't know, maybe 500 meters or so, and then go into the, uh, in, wait outside the school, and then, uh, this friend of mine would come and then drop off his brother there and then pick me up and then we'll drive to school. And that was very, 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 uh, very, very important because, you know, it saved me a lot of time and trouble. Then, and then this is what happened. Uh, <clears throat> soon after that, one of my, one of my colleagues uh, by the name of uh, R. Pala Krishnan, he was the uh, head of department also, and he told me, hey, I have this scooter, I want to uh, sell it. And so he asked me whether I would like to come and, come and try it. So I went to his house, got on the bike, and then I tried it out. And then, but at the same time, one of my colleagues in London Technical School, he said, hey, my neighbor is selling his uh, motorbike. Come, let's go and get it. And so he brought me all the way to Ballastier Road. And uh, his name was Lim, his, the teacher's name was Lim Kim Song. He, he brought me there and then we went to the neighbors. He, he brought me upstairs in a flat. And then the, the guy there uh, sh sh gave me the keys and I, I paid him, I paid him $60 for his mm -hmm. Honda 50cc motorcycle. And I went downstairs and I, I got on it and somehow I could ride it all the way from Ballester Road back to my home at Anderson Crescent. So that was my first bike. Wait, are you saying you, you never took a license for it? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> 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 and then, and then in those days also, you could get, a, I think, a provisional license. So I, I went to the right department and then I paid for it and I got a license. And that license, it was a provisional license. You had to have a tab on your motorcycle to show that you are not a qualified rider and you could not give anybody a lift. You could only ride yourself. And then many years later, uh, one of my one of my track uh, mates, his name was Yo Ken Chai, he was a traffic policeman. And we were teammates running in the uh, sprints together. And then uh, I remember him bringing me to the Maxwell Road uh, Police uh, Driving Center. And then uh, I, uh, I had to line up to get the, a date for my uh, driving riding and I didn't uh, <clears throat> uh, I had to go twice because uh, the first time I didn't get it and then uh, I remember Yo Ken Chai bringing me on his bike 
and showing me the route along Maxwell area, Chinatown area, where the, the test is usually conducted. So <laughs> I must say, you can try for that. And then on the date of the test, I, I, I went around and I got my uh, riding um, what, uh, license. Right. <laughs> the Bukit Timah Road has always been quite crowded, isn't it? Uh, even in those yes, days? Yes, yes, even in those days. Hmm. We had buses. Uh, it was called the Green Bus that came from Serangoon Road, Sungai Road, all the way to Johor. So those buses went from Singapore to Malaysia all the time, and then there were other other bus mm. services. There also the Tikoya bus bus service, and so on and so on. But uh, but then you know, uh, my my life was so much easier riding the. Uh, scooter, the, the the motorbike, motorbike, the fifty cc bike, and then I I, ch I changed bikes um, from the from the fifty cc Honda Cup. I went into a Lambretta, wow, and from the that's from, nice. a Lam <laughs> from the Lambretta into a Vespa. Was was so, that a bike or a scooter? A scooter. They all scooters. Scooter, huh? Okay. Lambretta scooter, Vespa scooter. I don't I don't see Lambrettas anymore on the road, yeah. but I see Vespa sometimes. Right. <laughs> that area so I so... rode I rode for thirty three years. Really? Wow. We had a car, <laughs> but the car was always uh, left for my wife because she had to look after the family, and she also was teaching, so she had to she had to look after the home and then quickly get to school. So she needed a car badly all the time and, and and the kids were there also at the same time so yeah uh, that's how we shared right that area along Bukit Timah is also prone to flooding right did you ever get in any floods <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to recall how I managed that even <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think they were uh there were back back roads, and if you took the back road, and then you could you could avoid the the okay. flooded part. <laughs> so when you first to went to Danan, what year was that? Was that nineteen seventy? Uh, no, nineteen sixty seven. Nineteen sixty seven, right? You yeah. you had already started representing Singapore. Right? Yes. Uh, could you tell us, you know, how was the school supportive of your teaching yeah. as well as the running? Yeah. In in I mean, uh, yeah, in in, in sixty seven, uh, there was one principal by the name of Mister uh, He Hiangon, and uh, I I can't remember how I went through that first year, but in the second year in nineteen sixty uh, eight, there was a new principal. Uh, Tan Chunyan, and Tan Chunyan was very, very supportive. And he, I remember him uh, telling me this. He said, when you, you, you don't have to build a large athletics team like the other CCA, like football and hockey and badminton and so on. No, we didn't have badminton. I'll explain that later. But he said, uh, we had basketball, and he said, you don't have to build teams for the school, but you look out for some talented uh, <clears throat> runners, and then you give them some training and bring them to some competitions, but you your main focus should be on your teaching as well as your own uh, running career. And so that was a kind of situation that he gave me uh, the support, and and so that I, I managed that quite quite well. And I remember some of those boys; they were quite good. They went on to national levels. Uh, I, and I remember our top uh, middle distance runner by the name of Sajid Singh, and then there was another Mahalingam, and a few others. Uh, I hope you remember those those guys who are listening. <laughs> Please recall those days. How we uh, we managed 
those those uh, occasions, and and uh, so that was how I uh, spent the first uh, three two or three years while I was still a national athlete, uh, and so I was a national athlete uh, there all the way from uh, from Tiamaru School, also in Thailand Technical School, in 1960. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, 67, 68, 69, and 70. And after 70, after the Asian Games in 1970, I stopped running. Uh, but I remember this principal Tan Chun Yen. He was so supportive of me. Uh, whenever I finish a competition, you know, in those years, I had, I had so many competitions over the weekend and also overseas, and he would always mention this at the assembly. Okay. He would say uh, what I had done uh, over the weekend or over the um, over the competition. Um, so that was a kind of support I had from Mr. Tan uh, Chun Yen. Uh, and then I I also remember another occasion when. <clears throat> One day, mm. I had to accompany my my wife to the youth festival uh, opening ceremony at the national stadium, and she needed me because I had to drive her to the stadium, and then she would join her school, and then I would drive her home. But at the same time, my athletes were having a a camp, overnight camp in school, and and then. Uh, after I, after the youth festival opening ceremony, I drove my wife home. And then when I got home, there was a phone call. This is in the evening, you know. I think it was like 9 p.m. or something, 8 or 9 p.m. Then the, the call was from one of my students. And he said that they they had an accident in school. The, the stove that they were cooking on, the stove had exploded and a few of them were injured. And, and then I, I said, okay, I'm coming. And then I rushed to the school and there was the ambulance and some of the kids, they were burnt quite badly. Mm. And I think three, two or three of them, they were put in an ambulance. And, and then I, I told the, the others in there, I said, okay, you clean up as best as you can, I will go to the hospital. So I went to the hospital and then at the hospital, they were I think three of them were water or burns. And then I went back to the school and settled the school situation. And, and then I remember Mr. Tan, he had gone to the hospital to visit these uh, boys who were water. And the next day, I met the students again, and one of the students said this to me. He said, Mr. Tan, talk to me. And he said this. He said, don't be afraid of school camps. You must attend more school camps. Can you imagine this? Yeah. So, and, and Mr. Tan, he could have punished me for not being there in an overnight stay, but he was so supportive of, of me, for me, he did everything. So that was one, one incident of how supportive uh, he was of me. Yeah. And I, I must tell you another occasion, yeah. very, very dramatic occasion. Uh, I was in the staff room uh, and uh, my, my class, uh, I uh, I was not in class because my my students were being taught by the Chinese language teacher. But during a lang lang Chinese language lesson, the the boys in my class, the Indian boys in my class, all would leave the classroom, and they would come and sit in the my my sports storeroom. But on this day, they had taken some equipment and gone outside to the field and they had been playing. And then me, I'm in the staff room. Somebody runs up to the staff room and says, Sir, come down quickly. We have an accident. And I go down to the field 
and there is one boy, he's there with a javelin stuck to his chest. What? <laughs> <laughs> the javelin was stuck to his chest, oh, but so fortunately, it was just the tip of the javelin. And, and so I, I remember pulling out the javelin and then calling the ambulance and then he had to go to the hospi hospital. But it was so fortunate that the javelin had not caused more damage than that. But again, you know, that is, I think, a very bad, bad thing that my that I allowed to happen. Mm. But you know, these are the dramatic moments of Dunedin Secondary Technical School. <laughs> that's that's but, taking track and feel too far, right? To javelin like that. <laughs> I know, I know. It was such a such a shock for me, but I was so lucky to have gone through that. And I, I also visited him in the hospital and so on and so on. Um, and I, 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 I'm sure those six or seven Indian boys, you will recall this occasion also. <laughs> this is Dhanan Secondary Technical School um, okay. experience. But let me tell you one very positive experience. Mm, sure. In the whole of 1971 and 72, I I did not have anything to do with, with athletics mm -mm. because after 1970 Asian Games, yeah. I had said that I don't want to have anything to do mm. with this athletics because of what I experienced in the 1970 Asian Games. That's another story. But, but I also remember very clearly the principal uh, pulling me up and saying, okay, now you have finished with your national representation. Now you see what you can do for our students. And so in 1971 and 72, I started to gather uh, boys and girls who were interested in athletics. And um, I remember some of these boys, they were so dedicated. Uh, and uh, I was equally dedicated because the boys, their training was always three times a week, but I went down five times a week so that those boys who could not come on Monday, Wednesday, Friday could come on Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and, and so on. So I, I managed that. And then I remember this in 1973. Uh, in those years, we also had uh, two kinds of competitions. One was at the district level. Singapore schools, they were divided into five districts and ours was the Bukit Timah district. And all those schools in that area, they would get together and, uh, and have a championship, the Bukit Timah championships, Bukit Timah district championships. And, and I remember we took part in the 71, 72 competition without any, uh, you know, a few, because I only had a few athletes. Um, we, we did some events quite well, but some others nothing. Then in 1973, our A division boys, we were A division champions. Uh, we had A division, B division, C division, boys and girls. And I was in charge of all these boys and girls. And I remember our A division boys, they were champions. And uh, when you are champions, for that division, you uh, you get to represent the district at the national competition. And so in 1973, was, uh, we were at the national competition. Mm. And this was the last time the national athletics competition was going to be held at Farrow Park. And I remember my six or seven boys uh, in the A division we went in and we got the national championships. This is against all the schools in Singapore, including the schools which had A division, which were pre-university classes. But wow. I had a few students who were of that age. Remember, I told you that many of our students were always maybe the second year or third year that they passed their PSLE. And so they were older and but we were the same age as the A division in Singapore but that was the last year that we had 
uh, A division in our school. After that, all secondary schools had only B and C divisions. But that was uh, the year that we were champions. And I, I, we still meet up. Some of those boys uh, in the team, we still meet up uh, for lunch or something like that. That is very amazing, right? Could you tell us, you know, how did you manage to, you know, coach these boys and girls into, you know, championship material? Yeah, you know, so we were, uh, we were all gathered there and then um, I would set them off on their uh, two-lap jog and then I would split them up into boys, girls and into events so that, the throwers could go and throw, uh, and then the, <clears throat> the the hurdlers could go to their hurdles, and then sprinters, and then the the endurance events. They were in a group, and then um, I would look after them. I would have a stopwatch, and I I would say, okay, <laughs> sprinters ready to go, and then I would wash them, and then give them some tips, and then at the same time, uh, okay, set the set the distance runners on their endurance laps. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, look at the, go to over to the cage and see the uh, discus throwers and so on. And you know, all those boys, they, they still remember some of these uh, occasions. Uh, but I don't know how I, I managed those, <laughs> those you, you are too modest, you know. Uh, <laughs> do you think, you know, as a national athlete yourself, you know, that kind of set the standards, you know, of excellence that, and otherwise, a, a PE teacher or a sports teacher mm -hmm. might not have. Am I sure correctly? Am yeah. I okay? All good. All right. So yes, uh, <clears throat> I, I I think I felt that uh, since I am the teacher in charge, uh, I had to be responsible for it. But I also remember there were two other teachers helping me mm. and. And uh, I remember asking them to look after uh, the high jump, um, and we had a we had a jumping pit in school, uh, and and so you know these couple of teachers helped me to run the athletics uh, program also. So that was how we managed right. Right. Uh, all the all the events. Just for a bit of context, right? Uh, among the national athletes of Singapore in the late 60s and early 70s, were any of them also teachers like you? National athletes? Mm. I, I, one or, one or, I don't think I can remember any of the guys mm. who were uh, teachers. But there were several ladies who were teachers. Uh, at least half a dozen of them were teachers. Um, the rest of the national athletes, they were either uh, from the police force or in the army. All right. You mean during yeah, they were doing their like national that. service or they had, they were employed in the police uh, force? Probably national service. Right? Some of them were national service. Right. Yes. Some of them were uh, like, for example, the the police, the police had a very special program. So they are, they are sportsmen. They were given half a day of working. Morning they worked. And then in the afternoon, they were given time off for training. So whether they were football players, hockey players, or mm -hmm. athletics. So they had that kind of uh, time off for training. Yeah, correct. Because... All of you were amateurs, right? Yes, so yes. that cannot be your paid job. Cannot, yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so uh, those guys who were in the police force, I think they had that advantage. They had a, they had a, they had a working life. At the same time, they had a training life. And uh, for me also, uh, I had my job. At the same time, I could come down for training in the evening. Right. So could could you like maybe give us a sense uh, your teaching hours and your training hours as a national athlete and the going for competitions? Uh, how much of the time did you have to spend for training for yourself, right? And yeah. going for competitions? Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> so the, the the first three years that I was in Danian Technical Secondary School, uh, it was, uh, and also the, those two years in Tiambaru Primary School, uh, I would I would have to do my teaching first, mm-hmm. and then whether I was in afternoon school or morning school, then I had to find the time to to train. Uh, and so, fortunately for me, um, what do you mean? Every day you had to train. Yes. Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> we train every day, and wow. so, uh, for for example, I, I remember the the year that I came into the scene in nineteen sixty three, sixty four. <clears throat> for example, on a Sunday, I remember Sunday, I would, uh, in the morning, I would go to make Richie Reservoir. And there I'll, be, I'll, I'll join one of the top runners by the name of M. J. Gardison. Uh, mm. He was a Malaysian, That's but right. he was studying in ACS school, Barker Road. At the same time, he was uh, later on he became a medical student, but he was a, a a champion, and I had come, and then I joined him. And on Sundays, we would go to Makrichi Reservoir and do the cross country, ten kilometers, and then come come back, do some slope running, uh, in slope running, and after the slope running, finish, go home, and then at three o'clock we'll meet for weight training at one of our coach's friend's house. We'll do the weight training and then from there go to the track and finish the track work. So on Sunday, we had three training sessions <laughs> and then back to Monday grind. Wow. And so, you know, that was the life at that time. So if I, if I was sitting in the afternoon school, then I would only get to the track by uh, 6 mm. p.m. Gosh. And then, of course, if, I teach, if I'm teaching in the morning school, then I could get there much earlier by 4, 4.30 or 5 p.m. Yeah, I think it's very hard to do this today, right? Because uh, nowadays the teaching is, is so intensive that you cannot take your mind off even if you leave the school, right? <laughs> so how, how are you going to be able to go and train? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I know. I <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I think the teachers now, they have so many other responsibilities and duties mm. uh, <laughs> uh, that they have to do. So I think uh, it's near impossible for them to do what I did at the, in those days. Yeah. But then don't forget that all the time, I'm telling you how much support I had from my head, uh, my principal, and so on. Mm. Uh, in terms of you know uh, your your standards for your students, I must read this uh, post right by one of your former students. Uh, <laughs> you know when uh, you were I think teaching PE at uh, Danan, so this is what he said right. Yep, during my lower secondary, he taught us geography and physical education. His PE warm up routine was enough to make us exhausted before the actual running exercise around the residential estate. Approaching the foot of Dunnan Hill, yeah, because there was a hill there, before climbing the hill via the staircase. During my upper secondary, he was posted to NIE to start the, the PE faculty there. Regards. So you remember the torture that you inflicted? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what can I say, guys and girls? <laughs> um, all those guys and girls, they were. Say- you know, they were so um they were so committed too. You know, they they didn't hide from me. Okay. Sometimes they will make my sports room, uh, sports storeroom their meeting place. Um <laughs> and you know, it was like a like a gathering place for, for them to meet and talk and chat and so on. And and I remember uh, I had Every year, I had a captain, and he had the key to my storeroom also. So if I came earlier, I would open the store, or he came earlier, he would open the store. And um, and, and these guys, you know, we, we're still, as I said, we're still 
keep in touch with each other. Yeah. But they were they were tremendous boys and girls. So I mean, and they I, made life so good for me in, in those days. Yeah, I mean, I find that quite interesting, right? Because this is a technical school. Uh, and so the boys are, are kind of known for their hands, right? In terms of making things. Uh, but in, in your view, were they also physically gifted? I think those uh, the, those who joined us uh, as athletes, they were all gifted mm. in, in, in a way, yes. Uh, and that's why, as I said, no, we, we could win the district championship and the national championships. Uh, and I, I also remember uh, in 1974, uh, we, we were in the B and C division and uh, we were in the national stadium for the first time and our our B division boys, they got the championships. And there, there is a very nice photograph of us, uh, all of us standing there, uh, the whole team and our principal was there even. And, and and we had won the B division uh, title and the, the, and the, the trophies were, were on display and all. and you know that's a very nice photograph of the whole team quite quite a large number of boys and girls were in that photo. Mm. <laughs> you you mentioned the district right? So what were the schools in the district? That was uh, Chinese High probably ACS was it in the district? Uh, ACS yes. Chinese High, and that very famous school at that time was Bukit Panjang and uh, Jalan Teck Wai. They were all had very good teams. And Naval Base was also in that, oh, in the group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think um, Ama Ibrahim was in that, also that, dish, that, that Bukit Timah district. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was such a fantastic experience. Yeah. Right, uh, and you, you you also took them to the the athletes to training at McRitchie as well. Yes, uh, our cross country team was training, and this this is how we did our McRitchie training. We would start from school, and then we would run through the Watton Watton Estate, and then we would come to the. PIE highway at that time it was still under construction but we would cross the PIE highway and then go into the uh, island country club the golf club and then you go through parts of it and then go through the forest till we reached uh, Mankrichi Reservoir the starting point and then we run back so you know these students some of them could could do it. Mm. Uh, then when we come back, we will do some slope running or something like that. But uh, I'm sure those students will remember. The I'm, I'm sure they, they do that. remember. <laughs> yes. Some sometimes we would not go to Magrichi, uh, but we will run around the Watton Estate, come down, and then go through the Watton Estate, and then come out uh, to, to other, the other side. And come out where uh, N NJC was, mm. National Junior College was at that time. And then along the Dunham Road and then back to our school. So, you know, we had all these routes um, and we, we used to run there. And uh, sometimes I would, I would be going with them around the route also. Right. <laughs> Uh, I, I think you have, uh, you know, uh, met up with some of these old boys uh, during, uh, you know, I think recent events even, you know, r recent catch-ups and all that. What what do they yeah. usually come up to tell you? What do, do they usually say to you? <laughs> uh, I think sometimes we would talk about how they how they trained, uh, but but usually, you know, we... We will talk about life, life that we were living in that uh, now, mm. how how we were mm. health wise and 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 so on. And you know, once in a while, one of them will bring up some topic that related to school, and then somebody will follow up with that uh, conversation. But uh, yeah, it just reminded us of those few years that we were together, 
as a athletes and teacher teacher student relationship mm. at that time. And now is you know friendship, <laughs> friends <laughs> level, and we are all approaching sixties and seventies. Fifty years have passed, actually. Right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Why why are those years special to you? I think those years were the years that made me who I am. Mm. Um, because I, I, I was devoted to my teaching career. So at the same time, I was devoted to the students. I was devoted to the school. And and the school responded. The, the teachers responded. The principal responded to to all the things that I, uh, I I lived for at that time. And I think, as I said, uh, those few years in school was what made me uh, the person I am, the person I became. Mm. And, you know, when I left, when I finished with teaching at school, in school, then I uh, became a lecturer teaching teachers. And so I, I guess... The experiences that I had as a teacher um, would have helped me to be a teacher of teachers. Also, mm. I could I could warn them of the danger <laughs> of uh, of things that could go wrong and the things that we could do to make life of students better as students and then later as citizens of Singapore. Right, right. Maybe I can ask you a slightly difficult question, right? So, uh, who is Mr. K, uh, first and foremost? A teacher or a runner? I think uh, 50 50. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> because I was a teacher, and uh, when I was a teacher, my life was uh, teaching. Every hour that I spent, was for teaching. And then when I when I was in the uh, field, training field, then I was an uh, athlete also. It was 100%. 100% for both. And, and so that is how I would say my life was a, 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 a teacher and a, and a coach. But, of course, there was also the other important part of my life, and that is my family. Mm. So, uh, I guess that's another That's story. also uh, 100%, right? <laughs> yeah. 